Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Bagnashi with Deep Believer. Today we have a compelling guest with us today. His name is Wayne Fowler. He had a chicken pox miracle. That's right, I said it, a chicken pox miracle. Soon after that, only a few days later, he died of a heart attack, met Jesus Christ, saw the crucifixion and also was told about the rapture. Wayne, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Jennifer. And, and thank you for this opportunity to, to be able to let more people know about the love of Jesus, because that's ultimately what it's about. Thank you. Let's get to this. So what was your upbringing on faith in itself? Or did you even have an upbringing with faith? No, I, I actually didn't. In fact, it was probably what we would consider as not good. Uh, my parents were actually uh, into the occult, um, and it was it, it was quite bad. Uh, ultimately, what ended up happening is my mother then got into witchcraft, and and yeah, and so and I had a really tough life about it. So we didn't deal with anything with God. We certainly had nothing uh, to do with uh, church or anything like that. However, none of that actually rang true to me. Um, there was, as, as difficult as it was, I, I couldn't bring myself to think that there was no God. Something deep down inside to me, just, I, I know that there has to be. Uh, but because of the, the difficulty I had growing up and that sort of things, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to listen to people to identify just who or what that is. And it, 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 was, it was hard. Uh, I'm thinking if it's, if it's a person or that type of thing that, uh, you know, if he's supposed to represent the father figure that you hear a lot of people talk about, I'm not so sure I, I want to know about that. I keep arm's distance. Uh, if he's anything like my father, uh, then I just did not want to do that. But I was searching, Jennifer. I would, I would, I was searching, as I look around, even in my difficulty in, in my growth, I could look around and something just told me, I can't see all of the complexity in the world, all, and, and sometimes such beauty and, 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 and all the diversity of of life and, and things here and the, the, the expanse of the universe and all of, I'm thinking like, there's definitely something bigger than me that created this. Uh, uh, I, I was involved in our, I was involved in a little bit of everything, I guess, that, you know, as you try to figure out, well, what, what about that? Mm, okay, nah, what about that over the, uh, no, maybe not. Uh, and so I was uh, involved in New Age for uh, a long time, but even that started to have, I, I was at odds with this because ultimately what you have is the people trying to say that, well, what you ultimately realize is I'm God. And I'm thinking like, yeah, no guys, no, you're not. No, <laughs> you definitely are not. Uh, and neither am I. And so one of the things that I had always said to myself is that I, I don't know who or what God is, but I do know this. If there is a God and this God wants to reveal himself to me, if he wants to reveal himself to or make himself known, then if he makes himself known to me or she or it or whatever, then I'm going to follow that God. That's that's what I'm going to do. And that's ultimately 
uh, what happened. Um, and, uh, and so ultimately I grew up though. And once I left home, I just, I, I, I just had tried to grapple with things like, you know, a, a, a pitchforked devil. I, I just, uh, I, I just don't, no, I just can't see that that can be the case. I just don't see that. And so consequently, as a result now, then I, I couldn't believe in a hell either because I'm thinking like, how does that work? Uh, I can tell you now though, Jennifer, having learned the difference, oh yes, there is a hell. And yes, there is a God. And yes, that God does not want you to go there. But the enemy, our enemy, Satan, he loves the fact that no one, or if, if there's anyone who doesn't believe in him, or anyone who doesn't believe in hell, those are the ones he has the strongest hold on. At this time, you're in new age right now. Were you married to your wife, Denise, at this time? Uh, what had happened, and this it's actually another kind of those miracles that I didn't recognize. When I first saw Denise, and uh, I won't go into all of the details, it's a long story all by itself, but when I first saw her, I actually heard the voice of God, and Jennifer, I knew it was God. And he said, she will be your wife. And I knew that was true. I, but I can tell you once I, and she hadn't met me. She didn't know me from Adam, right? And uh, once she finally did, she didn't like me very much. <laughs> she didn't like me at all. And, uh, and, and it ended up, I, I'm, I'm thinking I tried for weeks to get her to go out with me, right? And, and I just couldn't get her to do it. And, uh, and in desperation, I had I just talked to myself, I don't understand. You told me she's going to be my wife. She won't even go out with me. And, uh, and so then I start speaking out loud saying about, I've never had this difficulty before with uh, women. I've had other ones that uh, have probably been more elegant. And uh, yeah, I was really sticking my foot in my mouth, right? And, uh, but she overheard that. And she said, what did you say? <laughs> and I then poke up and I said, did you hear that? And she said, Yes, did you say that you had been with other more elegant women before? And I, I couldn't deny it. And I said, yes. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm never gonna have any other chance. But then she, she crossed her arms like this and she said, okay, Mr. Fowler, I'll go out with you. I'm thinking, that's what it took? Uh, long story short, of course, uh, we were married and, uh, and we had uh, 26 wonderful years together. So before she went to meet Jesus herself and to be with him. But when I had met her, and this is kind of really important, she had walked away from the Lord. She had been backslidden uh, quite seriously. And, and, and I can understand how a lot of this had happened because she had been in a very abusive relationship but before I came along. And so um, I, I could see, you know, where that could have come from. But it's in that dynamic that I met her. And so we had actually gotten married um, and, uh, and had our daughter. She had a uh, young son who, very young, he, he was just a uh, 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 three years old, just before four, when we had met. And so I raised him, we had our daughter uh, at the same time. So they were both young and we continued to grow from that dynamic up until I felt this, she was three. And that's when I felt, 
yeah, we, we really got to introduce them to spiritual things. And that's where that came from. Wow. Amen. So let's fast forward to 1989. And you come down with the chicken pox a few days before, or the day before Halloween or a few days before Halloween? And I could, two days before Halloween. And it was during this uh, revival at this church that I was attending at the uh, behest of the pastor. And I felt that it was, it was just very, I don't know, it was moving in me. Uh, this uh, evangelist, he would discuss the meanings of words, the culture at the time. And uh, he would uh, just really kind of lay things out. He would discuss the symbolism of things involved and what does that really mean? How does that relate? How does this relate to this Jesus? And, you know, and that sort of thing. And, and I'm thinking like, you know, I've learned more in these few days with this evangelist than I've known my entire life about this Jesus. Now, growing up in East Texas, and look, please don't misunderstand. I, I understand how uh, there's, how do we say it? Uh, a plethora of hellfire and damnation preachers. And I, 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 I felt so accused by them you're going to burn in hell if you don't accept Jesus right now. I love the accent. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, pretty spot on there, right? <laughs> uh, but, you know, there, there are, there's a time and a place for that, and, and, and it works, and, and uh, there are people that need to hear that. But for me at that time, that wasn't the right message that I needed to hear. I needed to know some more around it. I needed context. And that's what was happening here. And I was actually, for the first time in my life, without realizing it, feeling the draw towards God. And this is what was happening. And as my wife had pointed out to me, and this was just kind of the weird thing, it was right before Halloween. I ended up coming down with a, a, a case of the chicken pox after my children had previously. And I was just caught completely off guard because I had had them before. I didn't think you could get them again. And, uh, and when the doctor verified, yeah, you've got it. And yeah, I know it's tough on you as an adult. So uh, what ultimately happened is my wife had come to me and she said, honey, I know you don't believe in the devil, and I know you don't believe in hell, but I would ask that you give me the benefit of the doubt in this one instance. What if the devil is real, and what if he's trying to keep you from going? Going to church, right? Going to church mm -hmm. to find out more about God, to to give my life to him, to, to, to find out he's the truth, right? And at this time, you weren't, you weren't even saved yet, but you were on the verge. I was on the verge. Okay. And, uh, and so I am, I, I'm, I'm telling her, you know what, baby? What if what you're saying is true? What if it is? I'm not going to let him win. So we had to then, I'm going to come up with a plan, and we're going to go to church. Uh, so I ended up getting dressed up in this hoodie and everything else. We want to go there. And I'm trying to still at the same time be cognizant of, uh, you know, keeping other people safe. I don't want to, you know, expose them to this and that sort of thing. And so we had come up with a plan to try to find a, a place way back in the back, away from people. I was going to be covered up. And we were going to wait until they were all in and seated down. So I wasn't around people at all. And, uh, and so that's ultimately what we did. And uh, it, it worked out well because uh, she ended up finding this tiny little pew that I didn't know at the time was actually for the ushers, right? 
And so it's just big enough for an usher. And I thought, well, it's just big enough for the two of us. And we're certainly not around other people. And so I end up uh, going in there. We get that particular seat. Uh, that worship service is going on. And then this song, one of the songs that I just love so much, Our God is an Awesome God. And I go through the, this first chorus and I'm feeling something very strong in me. And I'm, I'm starting to feel really good. I had been feeling so bad with the temperature and the, and the covered in these pox. I mean, I look like a horror movie freak show. So and wait, I'm sorry, Wayne. So was your face really visible with all the, the scars? Did you have scarring on your face or pox uh, all over your face? I was covered. My whole body was covered, Jennifer. And that's what, that's what I'm saying is like, if anybody would have seen me, they would have just like, oh my goodness, you know? <laughs> uh, and so I, that's why I had to have this hoodie and everything. I didn't want anybody to catch sight of me at all, make sure my arms are covered and keep my hands out of sight and that sort of thing. But yeah, I was in bad shape. So, uh, but I was feeling at this point with that song, I started feeling really good, right? And so I noticed then as I'm belting out these words on the second chorus, watching the words on the screen and I'm just singing them out, as she's, I notice she's staring at me and I look at her and she's just like, her mouth is agape. It's just like, like this. And I, and I asked her, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she says, you've got to go to the bathroom right now. Well, she says that a couple of times. I'm trying to figure out, no, I don't. I don't have to go to the bathroom. Yes, you do. Okay. So I end up trying to figure it out. I go to the bathroom. What ends up happening is I'm talking to myself in the mirror and then I recognize, wait a minute, things don't look the same. And I end up pulling down this hoodie and looking at myself and all of these pox, everything that made me look like just a really bad pepperoni pizza, that they're all gone, Jennifer. Every one of them are gone. I check, I, I take off this hoodie. I'm looking at my arms, my hands. I look at my chest, everything. They're all gone. And so I knew I was supposed to be there. I knew that this was something that was not going to keep me from receiving what this, this, this was my, my big check mark. This was, oh, this is really God. This is my affirmation. This is the thing that tells me I'm supposed to be here. And I end up going back in there. She is beaming. Denise is beaming. I'm saying, I've been healed. And she's going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so from that point, that's what happens. We end up going through the service. And then after the service, there's an altar call. I bolt down, I'm the first one down to the altar call, walking through the sinner's prayer. I'm giving my whole heart, every part of myself to Jesus. I know this is real. And then ultimately what happens is, well, nothing immediately happens. And it's not until I then decide that I'm going to pray for my wife, which I see something happening with her, and I'm going to pray for her. And when I lay hands on her and I pray for her, then suddenly that's when I'm filled with this power that is beyond words for me. And I throw my hands up in praise and I am lost. All of my surroundings, Jennifer, disappear. That They're like, like a you know, we say in the Bible how the, the sky is rolled up like a scroll. It's like this. It's like these, it just goes around me and I'm surrounded by this pink mist. And I feel these waves of love crashing over me. And I am just lost in this. And I hear the audible voice of God tell me, Wayne, 
you say my name Wayne today I have begotten you and I'm I don't know what that means yet but I know it's something good right and I find out later oh I'm born again he born to me again <laughs> right <laughs> whatever and so I'm like oh that's what that means oh my goodness so but I'm, I'm sitting here praising God. I'm speaking in this language I had never heard come out of my mouth before, and I'm lost in it. Now, to me, I'm praising in English, but what's coming out of me is not. So it's, uh, it's all of that, and I am just lost in these waves of love crashing over me. After what seemed like just a few minutes, I feel this shaking on my chest and and ultimately I'm being pulled back and I'm like no I don't want to be pulled back I don't want to be pulled back out no wait, wait, what's going on but I realized that what's happening is I'm I hadn't been paying attention to my surroundings because I hadn't been here and it felt like I had been someplace else but now I'm being pulled back into earthly reality and to this being, oh yeah, I'm at, in this church. And I, my eyes, I try to squint to open them and, and I'm looking around and there's just four people. Me, the pastor who has his arm around me, patting my chest, his wife standing right behind him and Denise, my wife to my left. And my first word is, where is everybody? And he just looks at me and smiles, the pastor does, and he said, son, they've been gone for over four hours now. And I'm just like, four hours? Wow. Uh, it seemed just like minutes to me. And he asked me, do you realize that you were baptized tonight? And I just had this vague memory back, like it was like a, almost a dream and I thought that was me and he said yes and and even then even though I'm back in the church I'm still feeling these waves crash over me and uh Denise she's just in tears she just tears of joy of course because she has never seen anything like that and to be honest she had told me later I had to repent because I had told them this is never going to happen to you. And, uh, and so I, you know, I, I understood how she felt, but, and what she really meant, but this, this was just something she couldn't have imagined. And then the pastor's wife had told me, Wayne, you've had such an amazing experience, such an amazing touch of God, but you have to be careful now, Wayne because the devil is going to want to try to steal from you what you just got. And I didn't know what that meant, Jennifer, but I just looked at her and I, and I said, okay, you know, and then another wave, whoosh, God, praise God, praise God. I couldn't drive home, I'll tell you that. Denise had to drive home and the whole way, just whoosh, wave after wave crashing over me. But as you point out, yeah, I found out what she meant seven days later when I died and met Jesus. Wow. So seven days later to the day, to the day. you died of a heart attack. The devil tried to take you out. Could you just tell us the onset? So where you, you say you were laying in bed at night and then you felt pain in your shoulder? Well, the, the, what had happened, of course, the whole week, I, I felt like I was on cloud nine. You know, I, I was, I, I felt like I was been, I don't know, washed clean, like there had been tons of gunk that I had been, you know, carrying around with me that had all been like cleared out and washed away. I, I truly felt, and not to just, you know, be cliche, I truly felt like a new person. And, and I, it, the Wayne from this week was not the same as the Wayne that week before. 
it was completely different. And, and I, I, I didn't know why specifically, but I was definitely a changed person. On that seventh day though, <clears throat> which I think, again, prophetic for me, because I've never forgotten that seven days, why seven days? Well, I know why now. Uh, I, I woke up and from the time that I woke up, I felt like I was getting fluish, like I, it was coming down with something. And, and, and so I didn't think anything about it. Denise hadn't thought anything about it. It was just like, okay, well, I had just been, uh, excuse me, uh, miraculously healed of this, uh, healed of this uh, second course of chicken pox. And, uh, and so I, at first, it just didn't seem like anything. And I had no reason to think otherwise. But throughout the day, it got progressively worse. And when I say progressively worse, it got worse really fast. Really quick. And I'm sorry, Wayne, you were pretty young at this time, right? How old were you? I was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a week before my birthday. Uh, in which I was going to be 27. Yeah, you were very and, young. Okay. And, uh, and so, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I considered myself in very good shape, uh, in, in even better shape now, you know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just like, wow, okay. Uh, I, I worked out constantly. I, I was just, I was cognizant of that. I, had, uh, I had been in ROTC for the Marine Corps. I had gone to OCS for the Marine Corps. I had, I, 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 I had this strong military type of bent. And so I always wanted to, um, to stay in, in good shape and, and, and for that sort of thing. Wow, so the uh, heart attack didn't even make sense based on oh, yeah. your health. Well, it, to be honest with you, and, and that's some of, as we continue on with this, it, it, there were people who have asked me, didn't you recognize these as symptoms of a heart attack? It's so obvious. And I think, well, no, actually I didn't. Neither Denise nor I actually thought anything about that because uh, for these particular reasons, and, uh, and, and at least initially, and I think also too, after I've looked at it over the course of years and, and have prayed about it, I really think that the Lord kept that out of our mind. So he had a, a plan for this the whole time. And uh, so rather than, uh, you know, we, this was all for God's glory. And so, because I like to, I like to think, you know, what if God told me, said, uh, or someone else said, Wayne, okay, you always wanted to meet God, right? Okay, I've got a guaranteed way for you to do that. Okay, what's that? Well, you got to die first. And I would go, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> yeah, it's okay, you'll get sent back, right? And I'm going, I don't know if I would have necessarily been so willing to do that, right? Uh, it sounds, you know, it sounds like kind of tongue in cheek, but seriously, you have to think like, uh, do you feel like that's going to be the, the best thing? Do you feel like, do you have enough faith for that? I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe not, you know, whatever, God had this plan. And so I had started getting much worse. I started then having difficulty breathing, uh, and I ended up breaking out into a cold sweat, and then I started having this pain radiating down my left arm, and, uh, and in, in all of the things, I'm, I'm trying to be able to figure out, you know, where did this come from? I had been feeling so good, <laughs> you know, so where, where was this, and so in the early evening, I got to the point, Jennifer, where it felt like I was 
trudging through molasses. It was just like this effort for me to just take steps. And I told Denise, I said, baby, I'm going to have to go to bed early. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just really not feeling well. I'm going to have to turn in. And she said, okay, baby, uh, I'll be in there in just a minute. And I, I told her, I said, no, you, you don't have to come in. It's, a, it's all right. She said, no, no, I, I want to. And I said, well, okay, you know, just come in when, you, when, you, when you're ready to. I want to go ahead and get ready for bed. And she said, okay. And so I, I go in and I get ready for bed and, and I'm, I'm just really having a tough time, Jennifer. <clears throat> I'm really trying to be able to find, I, I, things are going on in my mind. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, what can this be? Where could I have got picked up something? What, what, it, what is this like? And, uh, and, and I'm very restless and uh, I'm not able to get comfortable. Well, eventually what happens is Denise, she, she comes in and she gets ready for bed. And you know what, there's, I'm actually, I was actually so thankful that she was there. You know, I haven't said that uh, a, a lot, but there was something that just made it felt so comforting to me, even in my discomfort. And not that she could do anything, but just her presence there made me feel better. And, uh, but what happens is she's, she's starting by being on her back and everything, but I'm very restless and I'm not able to get comfortable. And so she ends up turning on her right-hand side with her back towards me. And I'm, I'm sure that that was the case because so she's doing that because I'm just all over the place and you know, I can't get comfortable. And I, I laugh about it and I talk about this, but it's the funniest thing. She like falls asleep like she has just been gassed. I, I have never been able to see anyone that could fall asleep so quickly. She, she you were like, it was like, <laughs> almost like she was like hypnotized, you know, it's like, uh, you're going to fall asleep on the count of three, one, two, okay, she's out. It was just like that. And I was always so envious because I, I have to relax. I have to let my mind kind of chill out and that sort of thing, but no, she, she's out like a light bulb. And, uh, and in this particular instance, I was really thankful for that, you know, uh, but I'm still here and I'm ruminating over what could this be and what is the, did I pull a muscle in my arm from weightlifting or exercise or something like that and why can't I, oh, I can't get enough air into me and that sort of thing. And so I finally, I can't get comfortable on either side, I roll over on my back and I'm just thinking like, my goodness, what is this? And as I'm contemplating this, all of a sudden, Jennifer, without warning, I'm suddenly feeling like, boom, like a big elephant just like stomped in the middle of my chest. And, and, and it caught me so off guard and I grabbed my chest and I, you know, just kind of came up a couple of inches off of the pillow. And it was painful. I mean, very very painful, so strong and seizing. And I tried to be able to call out to Denise, but I couldn't. It was so strong. It was like the words were caught in my throat. I, I, I couldn't get the word out and I couldn't move either. I was like stuck in this position again because the pain was so intense. It like had me locked in the position. And when I realized I, I, did, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what to do. So I'm, so first I'm thinking like, so the first thing I do is I call out to God. Well, I'm not able to do it vocally, but in my mind, I'm, I'm just reaching out. I'm going, God, you got to help me. I don't know what to do. I can't handle this. If you don't, if you don't take this pain away, I don't know what I can do. And then Jennifer, think about 
two seconds later, suddenly all the pain went away. And I, I've got my eyes clenched tight, you know, like this. And I'm thinking like, oh, wow, that's better. And I'm thinking to myself, God was listening to me, you know? And uh, I thought, so I'm starting to take stock in myself. And again, my eyes still closed. And I'm, I'm thinking like, wow, I, 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 I'm not hurting at all. And, and I don't even have any of these other symptoms. I, I'm not having difficulty breathing. I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like I have cold sweats, I, nothing like that. And actually, I'm feeling kind of good. And so then I thought to open up my eyes. And when I did, I realized I wasn't in bed. I realized that I was standing beside my bed and I was looking down at my body on the bed. And my first thought was, I'm dead. But it wasn't, it was just more matter of fact. It, it wasn't like, like, oh, dear heavens, like, you know, I'm dead. No, it was very matter of fact, I'm dead. But then there was in my no little- fear? Did you have any fear? No, and see, and I've had people um, ask me about that. Uh, I didn't even have any fear before then. It wasn't like, uh, in this particular instance, because the pain was so intense, that was what my, my focus was, to be able to try to get out of that pain. But then afterwards, being dead, and you look at your body, and it's more like, you know, noticing that you had been looking for clothes from the laundry and then recognize that, oh, they're on bed, right? It's, it's, it was just like that. Nothing scary about it at all. It was just like very matter of fact. But then I said, I don't look that good either. <laughs> so, <laughs> because Here's this body, it was like stuck in this, the hand still clenched to uh, my chest and it had this very pained look on the face. It was uh, almost like just stuck that way. And I'm thinking like, wow, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Yeah, don't think anything about it. Uh, it doesn't look so good. But I noticed then that everything else, so you have to understand that this is at night and I suddenly realized that I can, I have this like supervision uh, that I can see in the dark, I can make out everything, I can focus and make out the tiniest details and looking all over the place, right? Um, and while I'm sitting here noticing this, and of course I see that Denise, she's still asleep there, and I hear Wayne, and I thought, well, is somebody calling me? And then I hear it again, Wayne. And I recognize that there's someone calling me and it's from behind me. So I turn and I look. And so there, you know, of course, beside the bed where I'm standing, and then maybe just like three or four feet away, is where we have the wall to the outside, right, of our bedroom. And it has this plate glass window in there. It's, it's quite large. And I can see out through this window and I'm looking out and there's a street that goes by there and, and there's a curb and sitting out on this curb is this woman. And what's interesting about this thing is not only can I see through this window, I can also see through the wall as well. And what's interesting, it seemed perfectly normal and natural that that's the case. With this vision, I can see anything. It's, it, and, and it seemed, there was no questioning like, wow, that's really odd. I've got all of these superpowers. 
Well, no, it was it was just that but this is the way it works here. Uh, and uh, and so I look at her, and as I'm looking at her out the window, she's sitting on this curb. Now it is dark. But it looks like she's in this circle of light and she fits perfectly in the middle of this circle, almost as if she was under a street light at night. There's no street light there, but uh, she's under this or maybe a spotlight that's shining down on her, right? And so you've got this light that, and she's out in the middle of it. And I'm thinking as, wait a minute, I know this person. Who is that? Um, Linda. Yeah, this is Linda. And, and now I'm thinking, I didn't stop to even question, like, who's Linda? You know, it's, it's so I didn't know a Linda. I didn't recognize her as some acquaintance or somebody that, that we knew, family, friend, anything, a relative or anything. But I knew at this point, there was this recognition inside me, that's who this was. And so then I do something else, which seemed perfectly normal to being in that state, also not perfectly normal in this state, in, in, in our uh, reality here on earth, is I walked right through the wall out to see her. And the, and that's what I'm saying. It wasn't like, uh, excuse me, well, let me go out the front door. I'll come around. And, no, it was. Did you just know like, you were? Did you know you were something supernatural at the time? Did you even know I, that? No. I no, I didn't. I I'm finding it out. Right. It, it's 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 becoming more obvious to me, but I'm I'm. It, it's a little at a time. It's a step at a time. Right literally and figuratively. So I walk through this wall and, I'm, and I walk right out to where Linda is. And, and I stop beside her and I say, hi, you know, with, with kind of this recognition, right? And, and she looks at me and she's got this smile on her face. And <clears throat> she said, Wayne, there's someone that wants to meet you. And I said, really? Who? Well, she slowly lifts her head up like this and she starts looking straight up. Well, me, doing just like anybody else would do, I look straight up with her too to see what she's looking at. And what I see, I see this black night or this black sky and right in the middle is one tiny, tiny little pinpoint of light. And I thought, my first thought is, it's a star, right? But I'm not seeing any other stars in the night sky. I just see this one pinpoint of light. And as I'm contemplating that pinpoint of light, then what feels like these big, hands, huge, huge hands, okay, grab me around my center. Now, I'm not seeing these hands, but I can feel them. And it's kind of this warm, comforting feeling. And, uh, and I'm starting to be lifted up. Well, I'm, I'm not prepared for this, right? And so my human mind, I'm, I'm, first thing I do is I throw my hands out to try to steady myself to see if there's something to grab onto. Of course, there's nothing to grab onto, right? There's nothing around me. And I look out at, at myself. And so all of these things are happening at a very fast pace, Jennifer. So but what I'm telling you is all these things that happen various little things. It sounds like it's in linear succession from each other, but it's really not. This is another one of these superpowers. It is happening so incredibly fast that it's happening in like split seconds, almost simultaneously. But I am able to look at something, focus on it, 
get all this information about it and everything else, look at something else, get all that information about on it. And, but it's so fast as almost simultaneous. Well, well really, so, quick, really quickly, I'm sorry. You no, made, that's fine. You made me realize how I always hear, and you know, it's always said that we will know everyone in heaven. And when you just explained Linda, how you like, oh, this is Linda. I know you, Linda. But when you're back now, you're like, who is Linda? And it shows that everybody knows each other in heaven, you know, and it made me really understand that even more, how much we're going to know each other, even though we don't know each other here on earth in heaven, we're not strangers. So I just wanted to point that out. I that no, that's so true. Mm -hmm. It's so true, Jennifer. And, and, and I think that it, it, it's one of those things that, that it's another one of these superpowers and, and I call them superpowers because, but they're really, they're, they really are in comparison to our senses here on earth. And here on earth, we are so incredibly limited. Uh, our vision, our sense of smell, taste, touch, everything and the way our mind works it is so superior in the spiritual realm than it is in the physical realm uh so uh when when you're when when you talk about recognizing other people yeah and, it, and you'll find out when I recognize Jesus, the same thing, or when you recognize the Father, there's no questioning. You know who these people are. You're going to know who your friends or family are. You're going to know who all of your brothers and sisters are. And because that's, that's what we are, there's not going to be any question, none at all. You're absolutely correct. Um, so as I'm being lifted up, that's that's one of the things, though, and this is one of the things that you're also going to have to forgive me about, is because I still have my human mind, right? And 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 it it takes a while to be able to get over these things because you expect certain things, uh, and uh, and so when when I died, right. I was the same person at the point of death that I was just right before death. Uh, sometimes you, you, you hear how uh, people expect that, uh, oh, wait a minute, that actually you will know even as you are known. That is what, it, that goes back, that's the scripture that comes out of it, because we are known. And you're known at such a deep level, at such a deep level. So anyway, uh, so I'm the same person, and so I, I'm, I'm not acting all, you know, biblical. It's not all these and thous and those kinds of things. I'm still Wayne, and uh, uh, although the new Wayne, and I'm able to be able to, as I'm starting to experience the expansion of all of these senses, because I have to point out, this is the big deal. The spiritual world is so far beyond this earthly reality. It is so much bigger. It is so much more expansive. It is so much more free and open and everything about it. When, when, when uh, we're told that this is a shadow of that life to come, it, it really is. It really is. We have these things. So we can see colors, for example. Yeah, you can see colors there too. But the colors we see here are so muted and so minuscule as far as scope goes. But there, it is so much broader and more beautiful and expansive and everything else than it is here. We have a lot of beauty that exists here but beauty in comparison to the beauty that is there in the heavenly realm, it truly is the comparison between the real thing and its shadow. It is that much of a contrast. 
So I'm, I'm sitting here. And so you've got to kind of shed some of the human thought processes as you get used to this. Uh, so I'm reaching out and I'm trying to hold on to something. And I catch sight of my left hand. And I'm looking at it and I can see there's this bluish purplish glow that's around it. It's coming from me. And I thought, cool. <laughs> real, real big thought there. Yeah, it's, like, it's the neatest thing. Um, and so I'm, like I said, same, same person. Uh, and so I'm looking at this, but then my supervision really focuses in on this and I can see into my hand. I can see that it's almost transparent. It's not opaque like, like we are here on earth. And I can see all of these, all of my veins and everything in there. And I can see light is traveling in the veins. There's no blood, it's light. And that's what I'm saying. This is Wayne light. <laughs> so it's really cool. I thought, excellent. But then I start looking at other things. Now I'm still being lifted up at the same time, but remember all of this is happening so fast. So I look at myself and I notice I have clothes on and I have shoes on my feet. And, and I'm thinking, I couldn't, how is that possible? I was just in bed. I, I didn't have any clothes on and I didn't have any shoes on my feet, right? I just was thinking, well, that's kind of strange. I didn't know why that was the case, but it was just an observation that I had made. And, uh, and so I then, as I look down, I see the shoes on my feet. I can see Linda as she is going away from me, right? She's looking up at me and she's going away. But when she's really not going away from me, I'm actually going up, right? And I'm going up and... I'm noticing I'm going through the clouds and everything as I get farther and farther away and I can see the land masses and then the curvature of the earth. And then as I go out into space, it's, it's all this wonderful thing. And so you can see the earth out there and I look back, but then I turn my attention up to where the direction that I'm going. And what happens is what opens up before me is this kind of funnel shape that leads into a tunnel. Now, it's as dark and, uh, you know, out in space, it's black as night, right? So, and so this opening in this tunnel is as well, but with this supervision that I have, you can clearly make it out. You can clearly see it. And I am then going up into this tunnel. Now the tunnel, as far as the size of it, it it's it's quite large. I, I've heard different people talk about different sizes and shapes of the tunnel or whatever. But for me, it 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 seemed quite long and straight. It wasn't all twisty turny, and and it was quite large around. And and when I went up into it. That's uh, the, there was more than enough room for all of these angels that were completely covering the inside of this tunnel. And I was then traveling through them. Well, there's a couple of things that happens in this particular instance. As I enter this tunnel, I feel this gentle cool breeze and 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 it was very nice it uh it, it wasn't like i was i wasn't cold or hot or anything else it was it reminded me of like just like when if you were on the beach in hawaii and and you felt this like gentle summer breeze just kind of cold over you like, it's just very nice right it was like that and I thought, oh and, but it wasn't just on the outside. It went through me. You know, it, it's like that. And then I turn my attention to all of these angels. And so 
I know that there are some people that have difficulty <laughs> with angels that have wings, but what I'm, I, I can tell you every one of these angels, they had wings. And now they weren't opened and out. They had them, you know, folded. They were up above them. You can see them and everything. And all of these angels, they were in this dark bluish kind of armor. And, uh, and they were all next to each other. They were all shoulder to shoulder. And what was so cool about this is I'm looking at this again because I can see it all with its supervision. There was this, like a, a, a chatter uh, that they were all kind of, you know, talking with each other. Like you know, there's someone that, you know, before class starts and you've got everybody's talking with each other, that sort of thing, except that this, they're talking amongst each other. And there was this huge excitement. And what I knew was they were excited because I was coming through. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself that they're excited for me. And it wasn't just an excitement that I was coming through. It was also a shared excitement from them that they were there to get to experience this with me, that they were there to be a part of this. And I'm I'm just like awed by it. I know that's what they're feeling. That's what they're thinking. It's just like real exciting. And so one of the things that I, I point out is, is like, how did I, how did I kind of, what's the story that it came up that, that kind of exemplified what this was like. And I come up with this uh, uh, story of the military wedding. And there, there is a, there is a uh, thing that we call a saber arch. And when you've got a, a military wedding, you've got the, the person in the military and, the, and they've got their bride. And, and, and when they are declared as man and wife, then they walk through this procession that's made of officers that are lined up on both sides. And they take their swords and they cross them up over above them and almost like a tunnel, right? And then the couple walks through the center of them. And it's such an honor. It's such a feeling of respect and recognition for the couple that have just gotten married. And they walk through that thing the whole way. That's how I felt, Jennifer. It felt like that. And I'm just like, oh, I'm getting the goosebumps again. So anyway, I'm going through there and I'm now focusing because here's what's happening at the same time. I'm speeding up going through this tunnel and I am going so fast, so fast that I recognize that I'm going faster than the speed of light, right? And uh, so what's faster than the speed of light? Well, thought is definitely faster than the speed of light. So. Uh, and I'm able to see, so this, this tunnel is like semi-transparent and although it's covered with all these angels, the spaces between them and around them and that sort of thing, I can see outside as I'm going through this tunnel. And so I can see planets and galaxies, just like some kind of Star Trek episode where you see these light streaks, it was like that, it really was. And, but then I start thinking to myself back in my human mind, I'm thinking like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be able to go faster than the speed of light. <laughs> and so it's, it's almost like breaking the law, right? And so I get uncomfortable with it. This is too fast for me. And as soon as I have that thought, I start slowing down. Now, not a lot, because I'm still blisteringly fast, but just enough to where I felt comfortable with it. And then I'm still going forward. Now, I'm looking and I'm focusing on this dot having become, it's growing and growing in my field of vision. And I'm still thinking at this point, it's a star. 
but I've got no other reason to think otherwise. But I can see then again the supervision all the way out, and I can see that there is a another kind of funnel type opening into this other realm. I can see outside the tunnel as I'm as I'm going by, and there's space, right? I'm I'm still in space, but I can see down at the end there's it's like um some type of barrier that's over the front of it. And on the other side of this barrier, there is this realm, this, this realm of this light where this star is, okay? And I'm watching it and I'm going closer and closer to it. And I'm really starting to fixate on it now. And what happens then is I get to this barrier and I, I don't know how to articulate it in any other way, except that it's kind of like this feeling like I just burst, like, like a firework exploding into this realm. I pop through, bursting through into this other realm. And it is completely different. It is beautiful and clean and bright, this, this realm of light. And, and here in front of me is this star that has grown so massively. I still think that it's a star and it's brighter than 10,000 suns. I, I mean, that that would only be able to start it. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm looking around. I can, I can see below me where I've come through this funnel shape that actually comes up into this realm. And, uh, and uh, you can see down in it that it becomes space back down inside there, but you know, I'm, I'm still heading towards this light. This light was alive. And I have this knowledge of it. It's a living light. And I'm still not able to yet comprehend. I, I, it's still like, oh, wow. And as I'm heading towards it and I'm saying it, there, there was Sandy Patty had sang a song one time in which she had this line in which she talked about the purest, holy light. That's the closest I can get to this. It was beyond a level of purity. It was beyond a level of holiness. It was and alive as well. And as I'm looking, I'm still heading towards this light, being drawn towards it uh, with these hands that are pulling me in. And I look down into this light. I'm looking down into the center of it. And as bright as it is with my supervision, it's not affecting me. I'm actually able to appreciate the depth of its beauty. That's awesome, awesome. But I look down into the center and I can make out the shape of a man. And arms are outstretched like this. Now, I can't make out the features yet, but I'm looking at the shape and I notice this. There is not a man that's in this light. The light is coming out of the man. It's, and it's pouring out of him. It's pouring out of him. It's pouring out of him. And at the moment I make that recognition, I enter this light. And at the very same time, that light starts to enter me. I was like I was a container and I am being filled up like a water balloon, right? You know, and it takes the shape of its container as you pour it in. And I am being filled up with the love of God. This is what happens with this. There's a couple of things that happen, which I think are the most important parts of this. 
as I enter the light and the light enters me, I am being filled up and filled up from the inside, right? And I'm filled up and filled up with this love of God that is beyond any earthly level of ecstasy, of rapture, of joy, of, of happiness. It, it was, if we wrapped up every term that we have, that's a facet of love here on this earth, wrap them all up and multiply at times a billion, Jennifer, that would only be the beginning because this love is infinite. It doesn't end. If we did all of this and we were able to experience that billionth level, we would only be just beginning. And I am being filled up with it and I'm filled up with it and I, just like a water balloon, and I, with this pressure, you can actually feel it. And this pressure that's coming out of me almost to the point that I feel like I'm going to explode from the power of it. And once I had that thought, then I can feel it start to ease up on me. The pressure starts to subside a level. But once, whoa, the realization that this pressure is easing up, I yelled out, no. Don't stop. Give me all you got. And I heard Jesus chuckle. He thought that was so cute. And he starts filling me back up. And he fills me only to the point that he knows it's as much as I'm able to stand. And he keeps it there. It's just stunningly amazing stunningly amazing. Here's what also happens at the same time. As I enter the light, light enters me. I'm being filled with the love of God. I'm also being filled with this knowledge. Undeniable knowledge. This is Jesus. This is God. This is the creator of everything. This is the way, the truth, and the life. I get this message, but I have to point out, Jennifer, I had only been a Christian for one week, so I didn't know that that was actually a scripture in the Bible. I, I found out later, of course, but my point is that when you are in the presence of Jesus, you have this knowledge and it is unquestionably true. So I knew this scripture. I knew it because it was true. And, uh, and so I start, I start asking all of these questions. I, I'm asking him, Wait a minute. Okay. So this is true about you. This, that, uh, and I'm starting to ask uh, uh, all of these other questions about him. And he starts answering them. And he starts answering them so completely, Jennifer. It's like an entire volume of information with the answer to each question. If you went to the library and you wanted to find out a, a book, get a treatise on a subject, right? You pull it out because it's comprehensive. And this is the way he answers questions. You ask him a question. When, 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 when you and I are talking, we're, we're like having this interview. Well, not much of one. I'm talking nonstop, but <laughs> so <good>. um, <laughs> It, it when when you ask a question, it's because you, you, you're you're thinking like, well, I want a piece of this information that I don't have, and I want to fill it out so I have a complete or a more complete idea of the answer to the question that I'm looking for. Right? I'm looking to be able to find out this information, and so I will ask several questions. Maybe what about this, or how about that? Well, when God answers questions. 
he has already thought about every possible connection with these, every possible tangential question that you could ask and everything. And when you've asked that question, he has giving you a complete answer. It's this whole volume of information and it's given to you instantly. You, you don't have anything else to ask about it. He has given you that answer. And so then I would ask another question and another question and another question. And, and I started asking all of these questions. What, what, what's the, about the meaning of life and, 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 and about everything, you know, just philosophical questions and earthly questions and everything else. And I'm just rapid fire these questions. And he is filling me up with libraries full of information. And, uh, and, and, I, and then he chuckled again. He, he was amused by my asking of questions, right? Well, what kind of questions were you asking him? I, anything, I, I, it's actually neophyte questions because I mean, you, you know, when we have our child talking to us and, 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 and our little child says, dad, why is the sky blue? You know, it, it's those types of, of questions. I'm, I'm just, I'm wanting to ask everything about everything. However, this is the answer to them all, Jennifer. It's Jesus. He's the answer. He's the ultimate answer to every one of these questions. When everything that we experience, everything that we learn, everything that we go through, anything we look at, all of it points to Jesus. And that's what it's meant to do. And, but when I'm asking these questions that seem, you know, just arbitrary, all of these things, I see how they all point back to him. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm asking everything. I go, what about this? What about that? What about, you know, all over the place? And he's answering them. And he wants to answer them. And he's finding joy and amusement in letting me know this. But then I got this realization. Everything about you is true. Every, everything about you, everything written about you is true. Get the, every, that means everything in the Bible is true. And I get this knowledge. Yes, it's all true. I have had uh, some people ask me, and you get some, some people that are just, they're so adamant. No, no, there's so many conflicts. There's so many problems with translations and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and, and I just have a couple of things to say about that. And one is, God knows how to make sure that his word is, is able to be received. He is, there's nothing that's going to, man is not going to stop him from getting his word out. And secondly, any time that we think that there is a problem with the Bible, it's only because of our individual lack of understanding of its level of truth. And and so I think that that is ultimately where faith comes in. Here is the crossroads. If we are able to use and get anything from this, uh, from type of experiences like I've had, and then you're able to say, look, I'm, I'm letting you know that everything there is true, just like I did with Denise. Let me give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that what you're saying is true. I'm telling you, if you will assume, just give me the benefit of the doubt and assume that what the Bible says is true. Let that be your first step, okay? So that's because it's never going to lead you wrong. It's going to lead you right to where you need to go. And that's at the foot of the cross. That's right to Jesus. And so anyway, that's actually a nice segue to what I then said next. And I said, everything about you is true. I'm sorry, it, 
Reliving this every time, it is such a big, powerful thing for me. Oh my goodness, so big and powerful. And I said, so everything about the cross, that's true too? In that moment, I was transported through time to be right there at the foot of the cross, right in front. And I was able to see Jesus as he is being crucified on the cross. And my goodness, okay, there, there are people getting, you know, that, that wonder and they ask about things. Well, well, what did he look like? Or, you know, what, what kind of cross? I don't know why the, the issue of, you know, what kind of cross is it? But I can tell you, I'll tell you what it is. It was a Roman cross. It had a cross beam up at the top and his arms were splayed out, stretched out really wide. And uh, he wasn't hanging loosely. He wasn't like anything like that. It was very, very painful. He was stretched to the limit and he, he looked so bad. He was beat so bad. And, and he, 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 you really have to get a true understanding about how vicious they were to him and what he went through. He was covered in blood. He was battered and beaten. It was almost as if you could barely even make out that he was a man. He was beaten so bad. His, his beard was half pulled out. He, he had blood running down his face. It, it, it was running all down his body. It, it was just, he was, uh, he was dark. He, he wasn't, um, he, he was a, this olive colored Middle Eastern uh, man. His, his hair was very dark and it was matted as I'm seeing him on the cross. It, it's covered, you know, matted with his blood and it's, all, it's got dirt and everything in it. He's got this crown of thorns just pressed down on his head. It can't move, it's stuck there. And I can see the agony that he is in. But this, I can also see as I'm there viewing this, sorry, I can also hear his thoughts. And his thoughts towards me personally. And I knew in that moment, I get from him that if I was the only person in all of creation that ever would have said yes to him, he would have gone to that cross, the one he's on right now, he would have gone to that cross just for me. He would have gone through this just, just for me. Just for me, Jennifer. And it just, it's crushing. It's crushing to know that. And it was the truth. And I knew it was the truth. And I knew this was the truth too is that he would do that for every other person. He wants so badly to have a personal, intimate relationship with you and me. He wants that so badly that he was willing to go to that cross for you and for me. Sorry. And after that realization, I, I'm coming back to, to this heavenly realm. 
cool. And I am just I'm recognizing that I'm not just there with Jesus. I recognize that the Father is there too. And he's right beside Jesus. It, it's kind of funny. I'd, I've never, I hadn't thought about it, uh, thought about it long afterwards, but I'm thinking like, wait a minute. So I'm, I always look at that. So in reference to me, Jesus was here to my uh, looking on my left and the father is immediately to my right, which would make him at the right hand of the father. Exactly. And I thought, how cool is that? How cool is that? He really is at the right hand of the father. But I couldn't see, I couldn't make out a form, even in my spiritual eyesight, it was the father was not visible to me, but I could interact with him. I could hear him. I, I, I knew that he was there. I knew that those were the hands that lifted me up. I, I knew all of that. I just couldn't see him uh, you know make out a form for him wait so was it like a feeling or you saw something but you can't put it into uh, well, you, it's, again it's it's like the like this knowledge again that that you that you know and so the knowledge of uh, it's I, I know he's there and uh, it, just like anything, I guess if we were, you know, blind on earth and, and we couldn't see that we had someone right in front of us, you know, we can't physically see them then because of that, uh, that thing. But we know that that person is there. We, we can feel them, touch them, talk to them, interact with them, that sort of thing. That's what this is like, only at a much higher level. Mm -hmm. You have the feeling of like you know, going camping, when you go on a camping trip, I don't know if you've ever been camping. I loved camping in, in Texas and it's. <laughs> I did not like camping. No, nope. I'd rather be in an RV or a hotel. <laughs> I, well, I got you, but it, and here's, here's, here's the, the thing that kind of relates to that, I think. I loved going camping where you can go out and commune with nature and have campfires and all that kind of stuff, fishing and stuff like that. But after about a week or so, you, you kind of want to go back home, right? You, you, you want to get back where you can take a shower, you can sleep in your own bed, and, you know, and it, it, it just feels so much nicer. It, it was nice to go camping, but it was so much nicer to come back home. And that's what I felt like right then. I've come home. Wow. So Earth felt like you were camping. The camping trip. <laughs> And it was time that to was go. Yep. <laughs> and, 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 and I guess the, the reason why I look at it like that is because all of the things that you have to do, that truly, our life here truly is roughing it. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's really that. And so that's why I kind of use those uh, particular uh, terms to, uh, to, to identify it. That's, that's really what I felt. And so here I was home. And so I'm thinking, but I have this niggling thought in the back of my mind. Wait a minute. Can I, am I, am I going to be able to stay here? And so then I vocalize it. I actually direct it to, towards Jesus and the Father. And I ask them, can I stay? And in unison, together they both just say no now and and let, uh, let me tell you oh my goodness so i hear the voice of jesus and it's no both of them of course it's it's this loving no but it's a firm no one to where you cannot question you know, it, it, you can't make an argument against it. it you know, this is a no. And um, now, of course, I didn't know why or anything else. But let me tell you about the voice of the Father. 
oh my goodness, my the very core of my being shook. It, it almost just rattled my soul apart. It was incomprehensibly powerful. And uh, it was the same loving no, but it was just beyond belief on powerful. It was just beyond belief. And uh, almost to where you're just like, whoa, whoa. Uh, and where you would almost kind of just sh well, shun yourself, like, wow. But it was that loving no. And at the time that I made that realization, no meant no. I started to pull backwards out of the light. Wait, really quickly, you mentioned that when you were there, though, you learned about hell, a revelation. About I did. Hell. Well, and it was it was kind of so. These are the other things. So the deal about hell is, uh, as part of a lot of the information that I learned. Remember, I was getting libraries filled with information and. What I was doing was asking to once I ended up getting into a focus and understanding about his word being true, then I asked a gazillion other questions about everything that I could about him. I wanted to know everything I could about him. I'm, I'm just thinking like this is the lover of my soul. I want to know this. I want to know this God. I want to know this Jesus. And, and so I start asking all of these questions. So there is the answer about him having come once, now he's going to come again. And then there's the, 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 the whole thing about heaven, I'm in heaven. So everything in his word that he discusses about hell, that's also true. And, and so now I was not able to come back with every bit of this information. And I wondered for a long time, you know, why not? But I remember also in Daniel, he, he, he's told, now seal up the book, Daniel, and go your way, because that's for the time of the end, right? And in, in one sense, I kind of feel it's that same type of thing. He showed me all this. He was true and answered it all, but he couldn't allow me to come back with certain parts of this information. And also he wanted to direct me into his word. One of the things that was very important for him to let me do was to immediately get into the Bible, which I did. Once I came back, the very first thing is I, I, I was voracious about it. I was in the word. I read it from cover to cover. I grabbed a pen and I was noting all these things. He's coming back. And, and, he's, and uh, just as a, a, a little tickler, he's coming back before the tribulation. Just so I was going to get on that one. Okay, so Jesus told you about the rapture. What specifically did he say about the rapture? There was what what he what he had discussed with me and what he wanted to be able to, to, to show me is all of these things that what he's, what he's doing about his uh, plan for Israel, uh, our, our plan as Gentiles to be grafted in, uh, ultimately what his plan to have a bride for his son, and, and it was, so I went through and the spirit was so strong on me when I came back that I noted all of these things because since I knew he was going to come back first for his bride, I knew that that was the case. Um, and so I wanted to be able to pick out all of these ver uh, scriptures that pointed to that. I also knew that there were also going to be many more people that would ultimately be saved.
through the tribulation period and that there was in fact a period of time, time of Jacob's trouble, the, the, this time of uh, great tribulation that was going to come upon the earth, all of that. Um, and, uh, and so I ended up, I started through and I started seeing how, how he developed everything. Wait a minute, where did he come up with a bride? And how does that point to it? Starting from Genesis and we got Adam and how, how then Eve was made from his rib. And I was just like, no, I get that. I get that. So it's from, from a part of himself, something that we can relate to. And, 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 uh, and I like the way, so here was, think about this from a rapture standpoint, right? This was my focus. It says that the bride was brought to him. Amen. And believe it or not, that's what's going to happen in the rapture. So we, are you saying that Jesus told you the rapture is going to happen before the tribulation? He's going to yes. take his bride before. Yes. Yes. And uh, now there's still going to be more uh, people. There's uh, obviously there's more to the body than just that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, some some people like to say it's an all or nothing kind of thing. And I'm I'm just going no 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 that's that's not that's not so because we can see this you know that there's the progressive revelation that actually does occur from, you know, throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament into the New Testament and so forth. And, uh, and, and if you look to that, you can see that. You can see, uh, and, and from, again, from rapture standpoint, the understanding that Jesus has a bride and uh, and they are one flesh. They're going to be one flesh. And, and so what's going to happen is he's going to bring that bride to himself. And how do we see these different things working? I, it was at that time, like when I was going through and I recognized a, uh, the, the, the similarities to this rapture. And let me, I guess, take a, a side note. What do I mean by the rapture? I consider it the, uh, the best term to use is the resurrection because there's more involved to it than, um, than just this one rapture. If you want to call it in terms of that being snatched out of the way, there's actually multiple ones that have happened throughout the Bible and will continue uh, to happen. What I want to be able to do is focus it more as the resurrection. And, uh, and, uh, and so here is where we got that. Is it still a rapture? You can use whatever terms you want, but just to, to, to be able to kind of fit this in and understand it. Back and then in Exodus chapter 19, then I was going like, oh, oh, there it is again, right? We, we've got another, here's, here's a version of, of the rapture. And then, uh, uh, First Thessalonians chapter four. I mean, oh, there it is again. And then uh, we we have uh, Revelations chapter four, verse one. There it is again. And that's what I'm saying is like I'm starting from Genesis all the way through Revelation, and I'm seeing it all over the place. And I'm understanding based upon what he's telling me that that is the same thing. That he is going to come. Before this period, uh, you know, before he restarts the clock on the uh, on Israel, on the Jewish people, and uh, and that that is going to happen before this period starts, and it it's 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 I I, I have a problem with some people that want to really really say that. You know, no, we have to go through the this tribulation period because we've got to be purified. And I'm I'm thinking like Jesus has been purifying us, and and you know, I, I, and I appreciate that. But also in Ephesians chapter five, he kind of shows us. Remember, he's that's talking about how wives are supposed to, uh, excuse me, husbands love your 
lives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, right? And he goes on to talk about, this is a great mystery. You know, man will leave his father and mother and be cleaved to, uh, you know, his, his wife and the two shall become one flesh. And this is a great mystery, but I talk about Christ and the church. So in, in any of that, did you hear anything about like, okay, well, before you get uh, brings here, he's going to beat you senseless and, you know, it's, it's just going to pummel you until you're half dead and, and then, but, but it's okay, you know, it's all good. It's kind of tongue in cheek. I, I, and I, I, but really, really, no, our, our Jesus loves us. And he, and he loves even these people. That's, that's what I'm saying is get closer to God and then you will find out just how God is, how loving he is, what he wants for you and how much he wants to be with you. So that's where that came from. So is, is, it, is it happening first? Yes. And um, and there are, what are the other things that, that, that kind of relate to this? There, there's so much here and, and we can't do it during this, uh, this, this uh, interview, but I can tell you that it relates to uh, uh, this, that the resurrections relate to the harvest, right? There are, there are three harvests and, and let me just focus on one, the barley harvest. Remember, that's where you have the feast of first fruits, and that's actually where Jesus rose from the grave, right, on that day, and he became our first fruits of us that are, are resurrected from the dead. But one thing that no one I listen to actually seems to discuss is, wait a minute, that's only the first part of that harvest. There's still a harvest, right? And uh, so that's a that's the barley harvest. So if if you've got the first fruits of that harvest, then what happens next is the harvest of the rest of that group. And so if Jesus was the first fruits of the barley harvest, aren't we going to have a barley harvest? You know, they always want to make him the first fruits of the barley harvest and then put everybody else into the wheat harvest. All right. Guys, you're, you're missing one whole group. Is there going to be a wheat harvest? Yes, and that would be what we would consider the general resurrection. And, and, and again, uh, it's too deep of a, a, a discussion to cover that. But the barley harvest happens before the wheat harvest. And, uh, and so the, these, these types of things, that's what I'm on. And that happens before the grape harvest, which is the wrath of God and everything else. You can tie all this in is what I'd like to say. Um, well, here's one thing that, that you really gave me an aha moment when you said that when you were there, you understood the Bible verse. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 14, 4, where it mentions everything in its right order and how it's actually a military term. And it is. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm sorry, let me let you ask your question. Oh, yeah, you... no, and but you compared it to the rapture, how you said you don't like when people fight about pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. You say you don't like that because everything has to be done in its right order, and you explain why. Yeah, and, and, and that is true. So for those people, that's, that's what I'm saying. Where is a unity of the faith? Uh, and, and it seems to be so divisive, and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be at all. Uh, so whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, pan-trib, you know, where they say it, it all works out, you know, they could use that kind of as a joke. But what I say is, guys, it's all true. There is a pre-trib rapture. There is a mid-trib rapture. There is a post-trib rapture. That's why we have scripture that supports it all, but the, it's for a, a different part of the program. The Greek term is tagma, and, and that means, that's the word used for order there. When he says, Christ the first fruits, then every man according to his own order, right? 
And, and so what does that mean? Well, the term tagma describes a company's in an army, or it can also be used to discuss uh, specific uh, classifications within a group, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I like to say that it applies in both instances here because we are part of the armies of God, right? And, and we are supposed to, what do, what do we have in Ephesians chapter six? We're told, we're commanded to put on the full armor of God, right? And, uh, and why would we put on armor if we weren't in the military, if we weren't in a war? We are in a war. So that tagma here in this instance describes that very thing. And that's why I say it's, it's used in its military sense here. So there are groups. How, do, how can we... How can we show that? So when you have a, a parade, uh, a military parade, and you have your uh, commander that's sitting there on the side and all of the companies come before them and they salute and they walk by. Well, they're all part of one group. They're all part of the one army, but you have this first group, they come through and they go through. And then you have another group, another company, and they come through and then so on and so forth. So you have one that's first, but they're not all in one big group. They are all according to their order and that's how they're presented. Um, and so what order is that? Well, we have Christ, he's the head of the church. He went there uh, first, right? And he's, he's made that way for us. Uh, the rest of his body has been continuing here on earth. Uh, and uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, body of Christ, bride of Christ, they're used in two different, I, I think, senses. I prefer to use the term bride of Christ because this whole Bible is a love letter. That's what it is. And and it's it's a love letter written from a uh, bridegroom to his bride. But yes, he is going to be coming for his bride, and that bride is going to be watching and waiting for him. Now, in that waiting, are they just sitting in a chair doing nothing? No, just like you and I are doing right now. We are wanting to get this word out to as many people as possible. How many times did Jesus say, according to your faith, be it unto you? I'm saying if, if your faith is into going through the tribulation, he is not going to drag you kicking and screaming into a pre-trib rapture. But I, I would just ask you, I, I would just ask you to consider that it is true. I would just ask you to consider that he wants you to be a part of that. Just like He's coming for his bride. And, and I'm telling you, I, I keep looking out the window. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening. Oh, oh car, car horn. Uh, okay. <laughs> trumpet. <laughs> A trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the case. But it is, you know, we're, we're kind of poking fun, but it really is that close. Yeah, I agree. It really is that close. And just as it's that close, so is hell for those who choose not to accept him. And hell is real. And, and, and here's the one thing that I, you know, there's a couple of things about it. God did create hell, he did, but he created it for Satan and his angels. He did not create it for man. And, but the only way that you can avoid that is he tells us we've got to be born of his spirit and, uh, and, and we've got to crucify and die to that natural spirit. And, and, and so it's, you know, it's, it's, no one's going to say that this Christian life is easy, even for those ones that, that, that say that, and you know, have to be purified, purified. Yes, you are going to be. He tells us that the work that he has begun in us, he will complete. So I know that's going to be the case. But just like I pointed out how wonderful your, 
and how expansive your senses are in heaven, right? The beauty that you can take in, the, the, the wonder of the smells and the sounds and the heavenly choirs and singing and all of this, this is so diametrically opposed to the very same thing that's going to happen to those people who are in hell because they're going to have the very same expanded senses and they are going to be experiencing the pain, the separation, the, the, just the agony of that. And, uh, and it, it's just, you, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You don't want that. You don't want that. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for anybody. And, and I'm just saying, choose Jesus. Amen. That's why he gave me this message to bring back is to say, hey, guys, I know this myself. He loves you just like he loves me. He loves you. And all you have to do is say yes to him. Say yes. So that's, that's really what that is. So we're going to go back to... Jesus and the Father said, you got to go back. And then yeah. on backwards, what's happening? Well, what's happening then is I'm being drawn backwards and I'm headed back at the very, just the very same way, except opposite as the way that I came in. I came in head first and this uh, funnel shape into this tunnel is kind of down to, uh, away from me and I'm going backwards down towards it. Well, I actually rotate over to where, almost like a slalom, right? Where you're, you're, I'm going feet first, but I can see the direction that I'm going. And I go through that barrier and I'm in the tunnel again. And, and, and all the angels, they're still there, still around the tunnel and they're still, you know, chattering and talking to each other and that sort of thing. And, and still excited and everything else. Well, so I'm, I'm going through there. And just like when I came in, it's very fast. And I come out the other side and I'm in space. And, uh, and I, I'm, I've gone past galaxies and, that, and I've gone through as I enter our solar system and I, pa I pass several of the planets, right? And then, oh my goodness, right in front of me is this beautiful blue marble, the earth. Wait, right. hold on. Are you saying that the earth is not flat? Um, no, <laughs> it is not only not flat, neither is any of the other planets <laughs> or anything else. They are round globes. And to any of those naysayers that want to say anything different, I'm sorry, I've been there. I've seen it leaving and coming, and it is not some flat disc with some <laughs> dome on top. I'm, if it was, I'd tell you guys, but it wasn't. But I'm out there, and with these spiritual eyes, Jennifer, it is stunningly beautiful. And I'm headed towards it, and I'm thinking like, that is so beautiful. I'd always wanted to have some type of view like that. I never would have thought it would have happened like this for me to get it, but, but, but this was the case. And I'm st still heading towards it. I go all the way and I'm going through the cloud layers down and down and down. And uh, you can see the land masses and I'm headed towards the area that looks like Texas and so forth. And I'm going down and all the way in. And you can see it the whole way, every little detail. I could discuss them, but it would take too long. Too long. So I come down in to where we are living in Texas and I can see Linda. She's still sitting there and she's still looking up. Well, she's watching me come in, but, but this time I'm not coming down beside her. I'm actually coming down over in through the roof of the house that, that we were living in. And, 
everything, I see every detail with this supervision. I can see the grain of the individual shingles, the, the, the lumber and everything inside the deal, I, even the, the insulation and the pink of it as I go through there, you know, it's the pink fiberglass insulation. And I come through the ceiling and we had in that particular house, there was this uh, acoustic ceiling treatment called popcorn. And if, if you can remember that, and I'm at eye level with it, as I go through, I can see all the, and so anyway, but I look then down and there's my body on the bed and I am right over the top of it. Now, again, although I'm seeing all of this detail, I'm traveling at a very high speed. And so what happens, I can see Denise, she's still laying there on the bed and she's asleep. I can see my dead body or it's right there. And I then enter in through my chest, my, my feet enter in through the chest first. Well, I'm going so fast that what's happening is that at one point, it, it's like this locking into place uh, or a, a kind of a connection is made to where it's like, I'm in there, right? And, uh, and the connection, there was so much power in this that when this connection is made, my physical body is actually catapulted up and over off the end of the bed out into the center of our, lit, of our bedroom. And I landed chest first right out there on the floor with this big thud. And that's what woke Denise up. I was about to ask you that if she yeah. woke up. She woke up then, yes, definitely. Because she hears this big boom out in the middle of the floor, which is me. And she wakes up with a start, right? And uh, I am immediately in pain. And, but this pain is different. Uh, it's, it's like this burning, you know, like, you know, when you have an injury and then after the fact, you know, is it starting to heal? It's this burn, right? And so that's what's happening is it's completely different, but I'm not able to speak just yet. Uh, and I'm trying to turn around and to, to, to crawl because I barely have any strength in me, but I'm trying because I can hear Denise and I'm crawling towards the edge of the bed. And what I'm trying to do, because I can't call her, I figure that what I'll do is I'm going to reach up with my hand and get her attention by grabbing her foot at the end of the bed. Well, okay, I didn't think about just what kind of reaction I would get from that, but I did. I reach up and I grab her, and she just like, like a, whoop! okay, she lets out this, 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 this real excited kind of yell. And, and then she looks at me and she says, Wayne. And I'm trying to, <laughs> to be able to get this out. The most important words that I can get out to her. And I force out with all the strength that I have in me. I just met God. Amen. And she said, what? And her eyes get real big. And I said it again. I just met God. And then I collapsed on the floor because I didn't have any more strength and, and I couldn't do anything. But she ended up, of course, she immediately jumps up, runs to my side. And it's another whole experience of eventually uh, she, she, I tell her the whole story while she's there. She tells me I need to go to the, the hospital. She thinks I've had a heart attack. 
And, um, and the reason why she would have thought that is, and why we didn't, we didn't think of this until then, but my mother, she knew about my mother who had her first heart attack when she was, guess when? 27. 27. Wow. Yeah. Did she survive and that, your mother? She did, and she had a couple of others. They said she shouldn't have survived it because they called it a widow maker. And, oh, so uh, do you think it was a um, some kind of curse that was put on your family? Where I would... don't know, but I I don't think that it's just coincidence. Yeah. That's, oh, the and, 27, especially with Hollywood. They have, I'm sorry, it's off topic, but I know Hollywood, they have the 27 club where they pass away at 27. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and actually, to tell you the truth, I hadn't even thought about that, but that's yeah. Wow. That, that's just something that happened. Uh, ultimately, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, story in itself, but I did go to the, the hospital. But, but before I did, I had to get a little bit of rest. And so <laughs> I, she said, I've got to call the ambulance. I, we, we've got to get you to the hospital. I said, no, no, baby. And, and she said, but what if you die again and you don't come back this time? And she was so concerned, but I smiled at her and I said, baby, Jesus is not going to send me back just to have me die again. Amen. And she went, oh, okay. Amen. And I said, I promise you, let me just get a couple of hours of rest. It was it was between four and five o'clock in the morning at that time. So I had been gone for quite some time. Uh, and uh, then ultimately I did go and the doctor did verify that I had a massive heart attack. And he also then verified that my heart was in perfect condition. And there was what? Nothing. That's yep. crazy. Yep. Wow. Uh, I had one person that had mentioned <laughs> one time and, and this was, so there was more miracles, more miracles. Um, and uh, one person had made this comment, well, maybe you were thrown out of bed like that so that to start your heart again. <laughs> and, and, and I thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe that was a, I needed a little holy CPR, you know? <laughs> but uh, in either case, that, that's actually what happened. Um, and, uh, and ultimately then as well, I didn't know for the longest time, Jennifer, why I was sent back. I did discover quite soon that one of the reasons why I was sent back was because I would tell people. Amen. I started with my wife. I told everyone at the hospital, every doctor, member of the staff, the people in the waiting room. I did not stop from that day to today telling people about the love of christ Amen. well you know what could you just do us a favor um you not knowing in, in 1989 and prior who jesus was and not knowing who god was but believing that there was a god there may be a lot of people out you know watching this who are like wow i want your jesus could you tell us and tell the audience how they could accept Jesus Christ into their lives. Yeah, I, oh, that would be such a privilege. You know, let me let me just ask you, and I want to talk to you people. First, before we get into prayer, I just want to tell you something. If you're questioning about whether God is real, if you're questioning about who is this Jesus? If you want to know, then I understand that because you see, I've been there and I was there for, for a long time. And I, I just want you to know that I can sympathize with those feelings, but I can also tell you that also having met Jesus, it is a life changer. It is a game changer. It is when you, if you reach out and say yes, then you are going to find the true lover of your soul. 
you're going to find someone who loves you beyond what you ever ever thought possible. And this God wants to be able to shower you with this love. If you're wanting to find out about that, I just want to be able to, to, to have you follow along with me in, in a little prayer, but, but pray from the heart. I, you, you've really got to mean this. If you're really searching, this can be it for you. So let's do that now. And just, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that your son Jesus is real. I believe that he is God. And I'm asking for him to come into my heart right now. I believe that Jesus was crucified. I believe that Jesus was crucified. And I believe that he rose from the dead after three days. And I believe that he rose from the dead after three days. And I believe that he is going to fill me and change my heart to a new heart. And I believe that he will fill me and change my heart to a new heart. I'm asking you, Jesus, I'm asking you to do that right now. I'm asking you, Jesus, to do that right now. I am asking you to change me. I am asking you to change renew me. me. Renew me. I want you to take this old me and replace it with a completely new me. I want you to take this old me and replace it with a completely new me. And I'm believing right now. And I'm believing right now that you are doing it. That you are doing it. And I thank you for having changed me. I thank you for having renewed me. And I thank you in Jesus' name for it all. Amen. Amen. Glory and I'm God. Amen. To say, yeah, and you know, look, people, if any one of you have prayed that prayer, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go tell someone, tell someone about it. And, and why that's important is you need to be able to start to move in this new life. Don't wait. I didn't. The very first thing I did was tell someone. And you are going to see things change. I want you to know that right now. And, and I want you to find a Bible. I want you to start reading it. And I want you to find and put people around yourself, Bible-believing people. Find a Bible-believing church, and they will help you. They will help you to find and to grow and to learn those things that are going to give you the new steps that you need to take right now. And I thank you as you are now a new brother and sister in Christ. God bless you. Amen. Wayne, thank you so much for this interview. <laughs> You're quite welcome, Jennifer. I thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.